Hi guys. I've got a very, very interesting product to review. This one I've been waiting for a long time. And had it not been for certain things that happened in its development cycle, I probably would have been buying this as a day one purchaser instead of now buying it as a belated hardware review. Now, this thing I was waiting for forever. I was instantly attracted to the concept when I first heard of it. And let me just show it to you guys right now. I got a Wikipad 7. Now, this thing, it doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel like like I actually own this. I never thought I would own one. But uh, I thought it was going to be vaporware. I didn't think it would ever come out. But for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, let me try to go through the history of this device. I'll try to get it right, but no guarantees because this thing had so many twists and turns in its development that I don't think I'll be able to do it justice as far as what happened, and I know I'll get at least one or two facts wrong. But let me just tell you as far as my recollection of what happened. Okay, this thing debuted at the Consumer Electronics Show in January of 2012. And it started out as a 7-inch tablet. Now I say it's a tablet, but it kind of rides the fence right there between a tablet and a game console. Because obviously it has this controller attachment to it. And nobody had done that before, so this was incredible because it really addressed a lot of the problems that many people had about touch controls, myself included. There was a lot of talk about Android and all of its potential to be a game platform because people like me, and I know I'm not the only one, we hated touch controls because it's so difficult to be precise in gaming when you're using, you know, the screen as the touchpad. So this thing seemed to be the answer to all of our prayers and more. They also said they would have glasses-free 3D. So in other words, the same technology that you see in like a 3DS. And I could swear I read somewhere that they were going to make the controller like some sort of external battery. And that would be amazing because, of course, with any mobile device, one of the biggest questions is, what is the battery life like? So with this thing being made for gaming, it seems like if that would just be incredible with this controller that had even more battery power to it, and that would just make it so much better. The price was pretty typical for this kind of thing that you would find on the market, at least in the Android scene, and it would be priced at about 250 bucks. And let me tell you, I was stoked for this thing. I remember I even signed up on the company's mailing list, so I was getting, you know, updates and everything from them, and this was on an email account that I don't even use anymore. But I remember one time I even got an invitation to like this little press event that they had. The only catch was it was in Los Angeles and they sent me the invitation basically the weekend of the event. So unfortunately there was no way I could just pack my bags and head out there. And I know that everybody got that invite but it still made me feel pretty special that they would do that. If my memory serves me correctly I think they were supposed to launch it like in the summer of 2012. But that date passed them by and deadlines kept coming and going. And eventually they went ahead and just redesigned the whole thing and they resized it to a 10 inch tablet. And uh, I think that they were going to make the 10 inch tablet optional from the beginning, but now they decided forget the 7 inch tablet, we're going to go full on 10 inch tablet and just redesign the whole case. And it's kind of a strange redesign because the original one, it had a very clean look to it. But at the same time, it had this very Nintendo like look, like the, the edges were very soft and it was very glossy, the buttons looked really nice, and the redesign, it looked a little bit more like Sega Genesis, like they were trying to appeal to a more adult market, the colorful buttons were gone, the edges, you know, they weren't as rounded up, it, it didn't seem as, as bubbly as it was before. And they also announced a new price for it at an eye-watering $500, a 100% price hike. I couldn't believe that. And you know what, that's the point when I said, I fold my cards, I'm out. It's not that I wouldn't be able to afford it, but who would pay $500 for an Android gaming tablet? Now keep in mind that this is 2012, so the Xbox One and the PS4, they haven't been announced yet, so we don't know the price for them. But at $500, I assume that I would be able to at least make a good payment on a next-gen game console for that price. Little did I know, and little did they know, that two years from then, we would be able to buy a next-gen console for $400. But anyways... They announced a new release date as Halloween, October 31st of 2012. Now let me tell you a story, and I promise you I'm not making this up. About two weeks prior to its release, I went to my local GameStop, and there was a flyer at the checkout counter for the Wikipad 7. It was just this cheaply Xeroxed flyer that was taped down to the counter. I was pretty amazed, so I asked the checkout clerk for some more information on it, 
And guess what? She couldn't give me any info. And this wasn't a new employee. I'd recognized her working there, you know, months and months before. But she honestly didn't know anything about the device. All she knew was that flyer that was sitting right there. And she didn't even know the price of it. Can you believe that? Two weeks before it releases and the sales reps don't even know the price of the product. And as far as I know, that was the extent of their marketing. Aside from trade shows and that sort of thing, their marketing boiled down to taping a flyer onto the counter of a GameStop. If they couldn't mess up any further, let me tell you this. They then pulled the release of this thing the day before it was supposed to come out on Halloween. And they didn't really give any explanation for it either. They said that they had to do some software tweaks to it or something like that. That's when I thought, you know what, this thing is vaporware. It's never going to come out. I mean, who does that? Who pulls the release of your product the day before it comes out? I remember even telling people on a forum that, you know what, I like reading about products when they don't succeed in the market, something that doesn't catch with the consumer, but I have never had a front row seat to a device I really wanted that arguably was not a bad idea, and now the corporate heads are just destroying this thing. But at least after that they went back to the drawing board because then they shrunk it back down to a 7 inch tablet and they shrunk the price back down to the original 250 But it's so frustrating because it's like all of those delays were for nothing. They're back to where they started and maybe even a little worse off because they never mentioned the whole 3D thing ever again. And finally this device released in June of 2013. And predictably, it didn't really make a big splash in the marketplace. Probably because they went back and forth so many times that they lost consumer interest. They lost mine, at least. But then I saw it on sale for $111, and I knew I had to have it. This is something that I thought would be vaporware, that I thought would never see the light of day. And that's a pretty fair price. So, I decided to take the plunge. Let's see what could have been. Alright, when they finally released it, they decided to rename it the Wikipad 7. I don't know if that's because they've gone through like seven different redesigns before they finally release this thing to the public, or maybe they're just celebrating the fact that they decided to make it the seven inch device that it was always supposed to be. I don't know. But I also want to point out that Wikipad is a terrible name. I don't really hold it against it, but what do you think of when you hear Wikipad? You think Wikipedia, and this has no connection to Wikipedia whatsoever. It, it makes no sense. I don't know why they decided to go with that name. Anyway, so the box, there's not really much to talk about here. It's pretty blank. The back side is where it gets interesting. This tells you a little bit more about the device because it is powered by an NVIDIA Tegra 3. And uh, don't get your hopes up too much, though, because it's dialed back just a little bit in order to save power. But it is a Tegra 3. But it's just not the same one that you would find in, like, an Ouya or something. Um, also, this thing is PlayStation certified. In that whole story that I told you, one part that I left out is that somewhere along the lines, I think uh, PlayStation bought them out, or if not, it was uh, uh, Gakai, whatever that is, that streaming service, uh, which is also PlayStation owned. So you see, there there's some PlayStation blood in this thing. And from what I've read online, this is one of only two tablets that is PlayStation certified. I don't know if that's true or not. If it is, more power to it. But I did look up the, play, the PlayStation certified device list, and it seems like there are dozens and dozens of devices, so I have a hard time believing that. But either way, if it is, then great. If not, who cares? All right, let's open this thing up now. Knife, please. I feel like a surgeon. Scalpel. Man, I really like these. Uh, I don't know, you guys must be so tired of it that I marvel over boxes, but for some reason I like that really thick cardboard stuff that Kickstarter projects seem to come in. But, let's see. For some reason the box really shall t tells me a lot about the device's quality. Alright. Their logo is kind of strange. I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of it. I don't know. I'm indifferent to it, I guess. Then cut this open. Cut away from you kids, remember. Or ask an adult for help. Just not me. There we go. Here's the moment of truth. Wow. Okay, here's the tablet portion. Ooh, foam. Alright. This is the tablet part of it. 
All right, there's USB on the bottom. Okay, so I guess it connects to the tablet by, well, the game controls via micro USB. And then there's micro SD right here, HDMI out, mini HDMI, then, wow, I didn't even know they made HDMI that was that small. And then I guess there's volume, power switch, and of course it has this little cover on it. It also has cameras, of course, up front. But um, one thing about this though, so this is the actual device itself, the tablet, the console part of it. And um, one thing though is that they've been, it's been said that this thing is about as powerful as like a Nexus 7. I don't know a lot about the Nexus 7. I don't know if it uses a Tegra 3 or what it uses. But I know that the Nexus 7 has been very, very well received. As far as like even gaming, they say that that thing is great. It's getting a little bit old in the tooth right now, but to be honest, I'm not going to be really stressing this hardware. I'm not going to be playing, you know, Skyrim or anything on this thing, which, I mean, what? Still, Android. Whatever, whatever. Don't hold me against that. Just know that I'm not going to be playing, you know, like PC games on this thing. So it's not like like I'm going to be needing a lot of performance. It also has these little, these little edges right here on the back. Uh, I think that's to hold it in place when you actually have it in there. I think it kind of, kind of clamps onto that part right there, at least from what I've seen in other product shots of it. But um, one thing to keep in mind, though, going back to the Nexus 7 thing, is that this thing is similar to a Nexus 7, but two things really stand out with this thing that everybody wishes that the Nexus 7 had. And that is that it does have external storage that you could add to it, which I've heard that Nexus 7s, at least the first ones, you couldn't do that. And I even remember that back then people were trying to scoop up like the, uh, I guess like the 32 gigabyte versions of the 7 because of course that has more storage and people knew that they can't add more storage to it via, you know, micro SD or anything. Um, another thing, it has the HDMI, which is another thing that the Nexus 7 lacks. All right. Yep, there's the foam. I'm going to put this in here so that, that way they'll protect it just a little bit. All right. Oh. Wow. Wow, this thing is chunky. This thing is beefy. I like it. And yeah, it's very lightweight, so I'm sure that it doesn't have that extra battery capacity in there. I don't know if it was ever officially announced that they would do that, but I do remember. I swear I remember reading that somewhere. But either way, I won't hold them against it. The D-pad is something that people have always criticized on this thing, and trust me, let me just get it out right now. Unless your device comes from Nintendo, they are always going to criticize you about the D-pad. But either way, I'm checking out the D-pad right here, and it doesn't feel bad. It actually feels like a Sega Genesis D-pad. Maybe it's just a controller again that's reminding me of that. But it feels like that because the Genesis also had like that disc that was like a D-pad that wasn't really a cross except for just on the face. So, and it kind of like pops out a little bit, you see? Also similar to a Sega Genesis D-pad. Then you got A, B, X, Y. You have the little nubs. And they do have R3, L3. That's pretty cool. And then they have these two buttons, which I guess might be like start and select, but they're kind of arrows, so that's a little bit confusing. I kind of don't like that it doesn't have a menu button right here, but I guess the actual Android part of it does. Um, oh, wow, this is amazing. This is going to come in later, just a minute. It has an extra little micro USD slot right there, so that way you could charge it with that. I didn't know it had that. That's, that's really cool. You're going to see that come in just a little bit later. Um, oh, yeah, then... R2 and R1, really cool. Wow, I can't wait to try this out. And let's see what we got here. We got a quick start guide. And ooh, it comes with a little clean cloth too. Then we've got power adapter. And with, you know what, this is amazing that it comes with a North American power adapter because the site that I got this from it actually was a British website. This came in from the UK. And so that's amazing. I didn't I didn't think about that, but for a second when I was opening it, I was like, oh shoot, I'm gonna get one of those weird UK pronged ones. Um, yeah, then USB right there. This is USB to micro USB. Ah, here we go. This is the British one. Well, that's nice. That's nice that they did it that way. That way they don't piss me off. They knew that I was going to make this. I'm kidding. No, that, that website and these people, they all know that I'm making this, of course. Don't worry, guys. 
If anything like that happens, I will disclose it ahead of time for you guys. And that's it. I don't think there's anything else unless there's something under the phone. Urgh. Come on, something secret. No, nothing. Okay, I've spent a couple days with the Wikipad now, and I gotta say that I'm pretty impressed. But I'm not gonna give my final verdict yet, because I think that if I'm serious about a handheld, then it needs to be tested like a true handheld, and so it needs to be tested on the go, out in the field, away from, you know, just this room. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'm gonna do that over at PAX South, which uh, this year, 2015, is its first year. I'm gonna try it out over there, I'm gonna take this thing on the road. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you my verdict after I get back. And so, like I said, I will be at PAX South, so if any of you guys are gonna be down there too, then let me know and maybe we can meet up. But either way, I'll let you guys know what my final verdict is on this thing once I get back. And so that will actually be a follow-up video, and I'll be posting that later. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Hey guys, one last thing. I just realized that we hit 100 subscribers, so when I get back from my trip, I'm going to make a special video just to thank you guys for supporting me this whole time. So, I hope you look forward to it. I think you guys are really going to like it. So, I'll see you then.